Welcome to the highlights of the third day's play in this uh, Cornhill Test match at Trent Bridge. We've had two great days so far, looking forward to another one now. This is the way it began at the start of the third day. 25 for no wick at the West Indies with Williams 16 and Campbell 8. There's one extra there and 25 on the board. So they were quite happy when they went back to the dressing room yesterday evening. And the bowling figures for England, three bowlers used, Fraser, Cork and Watkinson. And the state of the game, the West Indies 400 and 15 runs behind. They need in all 241 to save the follow-on. We join play now with the third ball of the second over. Watkinson already has bowled a maiden, his sixth on the trot. And Williams has taken a boundary from Richard Illingworth. Here he is now and facing the same bowler. That! Well, he's got away with it. Shout uh, there was catch it. And it didn't go very far away from uh, the man at mid-off. Well, a very risky shot, this. He hit it well enough, but uh, didn't go that high. It went very catchable height, just above head high. He's flicked that away with absolute contempt. Dominic Cork can't afford to stray down there. It's uppish. But it's found the gap and uh, no shortage of shots here this morning. <laughs> He's got rhythm. I don't know about line and length. He's certainly got rhythm. That's a beautifully played shot. And that takes Stuart Williams to 50. In the air. Caught. Well bowled, beautifully bowled. And a good catch. It really was the art of slow bowling. Stuart Williams picked up some confidence from that shot of the back foot, was drawn down the pitch. And caught by Atherton at mid-off of Illingworth for 62. It's 77 for one. Well, it was a nice innings, but if you remember, this was his first shot of the morning, and it actually went about similar height, a little wide of Michael Atherton at mid-off. This time it went straight to the skipper. And there'll be a big applause for Brian Lara as he makes his way to the middle. Seventy-seven to one, and that's the sort of tempo of wicket taking that England must expect until they get lower down the order. That's a good stroke. It's again a bit too short. Yes, he's such a clever player, Brian Lara. He threatens to come forward here, look the front foot, but then he's so quick to rock back. You've got a chance with him if you're pitching it into uh, the foothold outside off stump. But you don't have much chance if it's short. Eight from two balls. And Sherwin Campbell's got to be careful here. He's got to bounce the first ball from Cork. Shot. And that will race away. Campbell's first boundary this morning and brings up the 100 for West Indies, 101 for one. Not much doubt about that. As it was halfway down the pitch, it had four written all over it. A wide half volley. Yes, he was, but didn't he play it so well? I, I think he just seized the ball so quickly. 
That's very delicate and four. He's going to get four more for it. It bounced a foot in front of Gully. Malanga Strays are continuing to bowl wide. Just with one slip and one gully. Well, one slip and two gullies. One gully pretty fine and one very wide. Inducing Lara to play into that area, but he's been so much in control. It'll be very difficult to get him out in this circumstances. I think you need to be bowling straighter. in what seems nothing more than the blink of an eyelid. And wherever Mike Lamberton has put fielders, Brian Lara has completely ignored them. He's found the gaps. That's his tenth boundary. but they just need to come to terms with it. It's the timing is so wonderful. Oh, we're having a change of bowling. Mike Watkinson is the man who's been brought into the attack. Oh, that's a very fine shot. And what a fast outfield it is. Not just playing the shot, but having the wonderful timing and the, the good sense to play it late and fine. Richie dealing with, who's bowled basically non-stop with only lunch in between. He's now being replaced by Craig White. What a glorious shot. Full stretch, full face. And Brian Lara, the first on either side to 500 runs in the series. <laughs> this thing is 203 for one. And all Brian Lara's teammates assembling out on the balcony in anticipation a wonderful hundred. That's it. It's a wonderful hundred for Brian Meyer. It has been a superb exhibition of high quality batting. Shouts, the ball gone out to Silly Point, and he's out. Nigel Clue is eventually raising the finger. Sherwin Campbell's long vigil is over. Caught off bat and pad at Silly Point. And after 306 minutes, 225 balls, Sherwin Campbell out for 47. Well, Watkinson doing here for his captain what he's required to do an inside edge come into the pad a very confident appeal and then umpire Nigel Blue is taking a relatively long time to put his finger up but once that's up you're gone. Well, that must have been a very very faint nick. And with showing Campbell gun West Indies captain Richard Richardson the next man due at the crease.
Well, if you're talking about gifts, there's one. Richard Richardson it's easy on that. It's a poor delivery from Mike Watkinson. That's what Lara has done. That's when he's at the Radcliffe Road end. And again, there's a preponderance of scoring strokes behind point around to well, just in front of point. Just for the sheer beauty of it, not necessarily for the poor runs, we'll uh, have another look at that. Most glorious square drive, just in front of point. Oh! Well, not quite on the same level as Nick Knight, but not far off. Well, this looks uh, pretty close. Maybe, maybe just got outside, but it's a very fine line. I don't think you'll convince the Dominic Cork or the wicketkeeper or many of the England uh, players who are in a reasonable line to see this. No problem about the height. Angus Fraser. Oh, dear me. He's given that something. A lovely stroke. Beautiful the way he plays that. He picks it up. It's not a thing where he smashes it into the ground, but just picks it up there. He's caught him. Well, that just looked like a little late cut. It all looked under control for Richardson. Just sliced away off the open face, straight in the hands of first slip. Well, this was totally unnecessary. This is by catching practice. There is no, absolutely no future in that shot. It was not hit hard enough, it was not hit wide enough. Even if it had passed a slip, it probably would not have gone for four. Absolutely no future in this shot. Well, a bonus for England. They stuck to it. I think Illingworth has bowled very well indeed today. Plenty of variation. Not afraid to flight the ball. Was oh, what a risky run! Well, Arthur hit the ball so hard at Atherton at mid-off. Really was in the the danger zone. Atherton picked it up well, threw well, had it hit. Well, this would have been close. Probably would have been in. I don't think again worth the risk. Oh, beautiful shot, finds the gap. Michael Atherton's in there at a short extra cover, hoping for a chance to catch Lara, but uh, that's all along the ground, perfectly placed. Well, the bail is off. The bail is off. It was Cork who picked up a bail and put it back on at Old Trafford. Brian Lara doing the same thing. Well, there seems to be a certain amount of jocularity out there, hilarity. I think the wind must have blown it off. Well, in the air, sketchy sort of stroke, but it'll bring Keith Arthur four runs. Just sliced to the gully area. Not under control. West Indies move on to 286 for three. Arthur's five. Hey! 
Shouch from Jack Russell and from the man at square leg. Or to push a single and let Arthurton get down there. Yeah, Keith Arthurton, I think, using his head then, allowing himself a single so that he could take the pressure off of Brian Lara. That's four more. Once again, too short. It's been the, uh, the crime of the spinners all day here at Trent Bridge. Too short, too short, too short. It's a lovely straight from Lara. Watkinson's back on at the Radcliffe Road end. Beautiful stroke of his toes. Just wide of the man it slipped for four more. Going ball short. Ball short to Lara. And he'll thrash your way between forward point and third man. No trouble at all. Brian Lara seems to be playing in fours these days. In recent times, it's either one ball that has beat him and or seemed to have beat him in the next one, four runs. Weston is now 300 for three. Brian Lara 133 out of those 300. Full stop, full toss and four. Lightning fast outfield. Lara's uh, made the bulk of his runs with fours. And uh, he's now being severe on Watkinson. strokes off the back foot all the time. Yeah. Oh, well, no. That came back a long way from outside Oster. That's always the risk that uh, left-handers dredge. One potentially might just bite from the, the rough areas provided by the bowler's foot marks. It's the line and length that you can't really play it. And yet the, seal, the feeling when you've let it go and the ball's turned back just to hit the stumps is not a pleasant one. Yes, and the thing is, if he'd have putted it away with his front pad, which most batsmen do, most left-handers, get the front pad over there, kick it away, he'd have probably been given not out even though he didn't play a shot because the umpire wouldn't have been sure how far it would have spun back. Well, the new batsman is Rajendra Danraj. Coming in as night watchman. West Indies four down. Arthurton gone for 13. Total now on 319. That's going to find the gap yet again and take Brian Lara past the 150 mark. For the third time today, acknowledging the applause of the crowd and his West Indies colleagues. Well, they've gone up for the catch. Primo is out. The ploy has worked. 
disappointment for Brian Lara and for this capacity crowd at Trent Bridge. England trying their own up-to-the-date version of Lake Theory. Just a thin little help round to Jack Russell, it was enough. England had set the trap, as it were, with a leg side field, but I don't think even Dominic Cork expected it to come quite in that fashion. Well, there was an element of luck in it to get him out this way, but give some credit to England because at least they set uh, two men back for their hook or pull. Shipnarine Chanderpaul, superseded by the night watchman only a few minutes ago but now with the wicket of Brian Lara obliged himself to come out to the crease he's got this one away Chandapur now is also off the mark <laughs> pretty simple case of uh, pulling a short ball to four and uh, done with the least possible effort as well. Five more added to take that along to 3.34 for five. Brian Lara, 152. Magnificent performance. William, 62. Campbell, 47. Richardson, 40. Arthurton, 13. And uh, the not-out batsman, the night watchman, Dan Rash, who was originally coming in at number 11. He's unbeaten on three. And Chanderpaul, unbeaten on eight. Nine extras, 3.34 for five. The bowling figures for England. A wicket for Cork, one for Watkinson. And three for Illingworth, who bowled pretty well. Just remember that uh, he's got a broken index finger on his right hand, not his bowling hand, and uh, he did a good job. But for much of the time, I thought those spinners were far too short today. You can't bowl as short as that and expect to get class batsmen out. And the state of the game after three days, three very good days. 440 for England and West Indies, 334 for five. Lara, 152. West Indies, 106 runs behind, but the star of the day certainly the young left-hander, and he talked with Tony Lewis after the completion of the third day's play. Brian, congratulations. Thanks very much. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was a good day. Um, you know, I wish I was still there at the end, but, you know, got a glove onto the ball down the leg side, and I suppose these things happen. Yeah. How, how did the pitch play? I mean, it did turn, we saw that, but it was quite slow, was it? Yeah, it's um, a bit slow, but um, I think, you know, our guys batted pretty well, mm. and um, I, you know, I'll I think well done to Sue and Campbell, who stuck out there, wasn't timing the ball. But um, I thought it was a very good batting track, and mm. um, England showed that. And, you know, it's nice to see our guys getting some runs, and hopefully we go on tomorrow and get some more. A wonderful young cricketer, Brian Lara, and we've had the pleasure of watching him make 100 at Old Trafford, and now another one here today, and they were equally good. Touch of class about everything he does, and beautiful timing, wonderful footwork. Now then, Geoffrey Boycott has his ideas on uh, what went on today, what might have gone on, and what is going to happen tomorrow. Well, there is a song from Dr Zivago, Lara's Theme, and you could have played that all day today. It was Lara's Day, a brilliant exhibition, some scintillating stroke play, and he thrilled everybody, perhaps but the England bowlers. All the West Indians, or most of them, made runs. It's such an easy pitch, but he just put it into context. A class act, and you can't follow that. Brian Lara was brilliant. For England... They didn't do anything wrong. The pitch is so good, it is difficult to tell them what they could have done better. I thought Michael Atherton had a reasonably good day. Perhaps a couple of points, he could have told the two spinners to pitch it up a little bit more, even over pitch and make the batsman drive more rather than play off the back foot. And secondly, he bowled both spinners, Watkinson and Illingworth, from the same ends. He could have switched them round, just maybe causing a problem or two for the West Indian batsman. Tomorrow, well, what have England got to look forward to? I think they've got to be positive, try and bowl the West Indians out quickly, make quick runs, and then think of giving West Indies an awkward session or two on the last day. Pigs might fly. Well, you've got to think positive in Test Match Cricket. 
if you want to win test matches.